Good afternoon. Welcome to another daily devotion. This is episode 159, and we find ourselves in the last section of Revelation. It's been a long journey to get here from the book of James all the way through to Revelation. Tomorrow we'll be going back to Matthew, but before we start today's devotion, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another glorious day. Thank you for your word of truth that we can just spend 15 minutes opening it up and we pray that you would speak to us, that we would hear and see wonderful things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've got your Bible, we're going to be turning to the book of Revelation, as I said, for the last time, Revelation 22, and we'll be reading from verse 6 through to 21. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the Spirit of the Prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say come, and let the one who hears say come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Well, it's been a it's been a pretty long journey through the book of Revelation. We've been here for a number of months now, and we've seen a whole sort of plethora of different things. We've summarized it as we've traveled through. We've kept referencing time and time again the promise of Jesus that the that I will build my church, Jesus said, and the gates of Hades will never overcome it. And we talked about the fact that the book of Revelation is like the movie version of that promise working its way out in history. So, so as the church walks through history, there's this constant battle between the church and the gates of Hades. And yet the gates of Hades never prevail, never win ultimately. They, they may get some small victor, victories here and there, but they never really win. Well, the other aspect of the book of Revelation is, like all scripture, it's a book that deserves response. What I mean by that is the, scripture is, the scriptures are not just written to inform. The information is a part of what they do. The word of God informs us, but it informs us for a purpose. And so the book of Revelation informs us, informs the church for a reason. 
there is a, a response expected as one reads through the book of Revelation. And this last section leaves behind the prophetic. It leaves behind the, the imagery. And it delivers us with a call. So it's like the whole book of Revelation has rolled forth and there's been and there's been little points of application here and there. But now, now it's as if right at the end, Jesus stops and says, okay, now that I've given you my revelation, this is what I want you to do. And so obviously we need to listen really well, don't we? We need to listen very clearly to what Jesus expects of us. There's often we read the scripture and think, what, what do I think I need to do from this passage? But actually the more important question is, what does Jesus want me to do? And, and we, see, we see five things, five things in this section. Firstly, we need to keep the words of Revelation. Have a look at verse 7. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now, if you, if you were to summarize, if you were to try and pick one or two words to, to summarize the whole sort of driving force or the words of the prophecy of this book. I wonder what words you would pick. If we, if we think back to the, to the churches, those seven letters to the seven churches, every one of them was called to be something. I wonder if you can remember what it was. They were called to be conquerors or overcomers, depending on your translation. And they were called to be faithful. They were faithful witnesses. And those, those sort of two words, witness, conqueror, overcomer, faithfulness, those, those sort of words really are, I find to be a great summary of what the church is called to do and be in the book of Revelation. And that's because that's what the church is primarily called to do and be in this age. See, the, the, the world seeks to overcome us and we're called to overcome. The world seeks to crush the church. We're called to be conquerors. We're called to stand firm in the faith. We're called to be faithful. And we're called to bear witness to Jesus Christ. And so there's these, these very proactive images, these very proactive words that the church is called to do and be. And blessed is the one who does it. Why, why are we blessed if we do it? Because in faithfulness and in overcoming, we receive the eternal prize. It's like in the book of Hebrews where it says, uh, he warns us, the writer to Hebrews warns us, and he says, don't miss out on the rest. Don't neglect the call that's been put upon your life and miss out on the glorious rest to come. We're called to hold firm to our salvation. Hold firm to our confession. Waiting for the day of redemption. But then notice also, we're not just called to, to keep the words of this book. John is called, and I think we're called too, to worship God. Have a look at 8 and 9. So John is, is so overwhelmed by the whole vision. He's so overwhelmed by everything he's heard and seen. Have a look at verse 8. When I heard and saw them, I think he's referencing everything. When he heard and saw everything, he falls down and worships the angel. So he sees the blessed redemption. He sees the incredible redemption of God, the fulfillment of all things, the, the sanctification and purification of the church, the glorious rest, and his, his natural response is to worship, and he just worships the first thing he sees. And of course, the angel rebukes him and says, don't worship me, I'm a servant, worship God. Now, now you might feel like critiquing John, but let's be honest, shows a wonderful heart. That his instant response, overwhelmed, is to worship. Some of us can't even get to the point of worshipping, let alone falling down at the wrong person and worshipping. But it's a great reminder, isn't it? That, that ultimately, we're, we're called to be worshippers. Our response to the salvation of God and, and the work of God 
in history and at its consummation is worship. So let's worship God. Thirdly, we're called to live holy and righteous, 10 to 13. Don't seal up the words. Rather, let the evildoer do their evil, let the filthy do their filthiness, let the righteous do what's right, and let the holy still be right, holy. In other words, let those who are of the devil continue living as they do, and let the godly live as they do. He's calling us to live out of who we are. If we are children of God, we're called to live as children of God. You see, there's no room in the scriptures for people claiming to be Christians and not living like it. That, that's basically an oxymoron. To, to say you're a believer and not live like a believer doesn't make sense. If you're a child of the devil, you will live as a child of the devil. And if you're a child of God, you will live as a child of God. But then, fourthly, we're called not to make ourselves perfect. Interesting. You know, we've been called to faithfulness and called to keep the word. We've been called to worship. We've been called to live in holiness and righteousness. And these are all very active things. And you're thinking, oh, this sounds very works-based. I've got to do all this stuff. Do, do, do. But... We're called to wash our robes in Christ. Have a look with me at verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they might have the right to enter and eat of the tree of life. You see, entrance to the city and entrance to the tree of life is not based off your performance. It's based off the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one way to entrance. There's only one way to enter, and there's only one way to dwell, and there's only one way to remain, and it's by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because do you notice those who are outside? It's all the filthy people. It's all the sinners. It's you. And you would be outside too. And you will be outside unless you wash your robes in the blood of Jesus Christ. You see... The fact that we're called to obedience doesn't negate or cancel out the way that we enter. There's only one way to enter. We're saved by grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And it just, you know, the, the book of Revelation, with all its beautiful pictures and, and, and bizarre stuff, ultimately is a call. It's a call to salvation. And it's a call to belief. It's an invitation to come. And so the last part we see in verse 16 to 21, an invitation to come. 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty, Come. It's a beautiful invitation from Jesus Christ himself. And from the Bride of Christ, which is heralding forth the message of Christ. It's an invitation to come and receive life. Jesus, Jesus has the water of life and he invites us to come and drink for free. Are you thirsty? Come and drink, Jesus says. So, ah, um, I, I can't earn it. It's free. I already drunk. You haven't had this water. Is this, it's a promise of eternal life given freely by Jesus himself. And so the, the question is, have you, have you come? Have you come and found life in Christ? Have you responded to the invitation? The church in this age is, is heralding forth the message over and over and over again. Come, all who are weary, and drink from the living fountain. And the question for you and the question for me is, will we come? Will we come to the one who provides for free? You see, we need to believe what the word says. Verse 18 onwards. We need to believe what the book says about this invitation to come. And we must respond. See, Revelation, at the end of the day, Revelation is not a, a code to crack. Revelation is not a, a mystery to be 
calculated, numbers to be added up. At the end of the day, the book of Revelation contains the gospel. And it's a message of hope for sinners like you and me, who need comfort and encouragement and hope in a broken world. Oh, may the Lord bless it to our hearts. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the book of Revelation and the journey through it. And Lord, as we close out this day, we pray that you would bless us and keep us. And we ask that you watch over us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in with me for another daily devotion. It's been great to be together. I'll see you again tomorrow, same place, same time, for a daily devotion in the Gospel of Matthew. Have a great night.